Hello and welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith and this is Too Many Bones. We are on day number four. Patches has found himself not surrounded yet, but likely to become surrounded based on how many monsters are currently around, or baddies I should say. Uh, in the last video we talked about the encounter we chose. We picked no skill dice can be used for the first round. That's not good because we can't use our med kit. And we currently have five health on Patches. So we'll see how it goes. Let's get right into the battle. So. This one right here is initiative four, or sorry, initiative five, but for lane four. So uh, looks like the Griffin yearling is going first. He is a melee character. He'll move down to here to be adjacent to patches, and will attack with the two attack dice on the side. We're really hoping he doesn't hit us too too hard because I don't want to lose any health. Nice. So we got a one and a bone. That's good. So a miss and a hit. So one hit, I can take that. That's all right. That's not bad, um, especially for some uh, an enemy hitting with two dice. Now what happens at the end after his attack is he gains what's considered the flight ability. The flight ability is denoted by this flight dice right here and it sits on him to say he's basically taken off. When he takes off, he also gains the, like the untargetable uh, condition, meaning that I can't target him when I'm adjacent to him on this round. So I can't actually go ahead and try to do anything to hit him, which is really, really nasty. It specifically says, um, Untargetable says place untargetable effect dice on this unit until the start of this unit's next turn It cannot be targeted. So it basically is just gone Now what ends up happening so you guys understand this is that it would seem like every single turn he attacks This would this pair of dice would just continually keep coming what ends up happening actually is on the next turn uh, This flight dice disappears and it disappears after he attacks So essentially how this guy is working thematically is he's a flying griffin, he'll pop in and pop out of battle, and on every second round I have a chance to hit him. So basically I want to stay next to him to get that chance, right? So I don't want to run away and then have him come available to be hit and I'm on the other side of the board. It's strategic. Uh, it's very cool thematically too, having the bird kind of coming in, hitting me, going, you know, flying away, and just being a pest, essentially. Now it's a griffin, so it's not just a bird. We're not talking about a hummingbird hitting me right now. This is a griffin. It's not nice. He is a unfriendly character. So anyway, that's him done. So we're gonna move to lane number two, and that's gonna be this guy in the back, this coward. I mean, this uh, goblin boomer who's in the back here. Now he does a mischief one, which doesn't matter for me right now because I have no active dice. Otherwise he would steal something from me and force me to discard it. He does have careless though. So if he does roll a bone on his one attack here, he ends up hurting himself. And let's hope that he is clumsy enough to drop a bomb. Nope, he wasn't. Uh, and it, because he's a ranged character, just so that you guys know that as well, he's in the back, he can hit me from anywhere. So he ends up doing one damage to patches. That's not good. Now it's my turn. The good thing is I get to heal for one at the beginning of every turn. Remember again, I cannot use my medkit dice. This is where things get interesting because I want to be smart about what I do here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Let me think. What should I do? Now I could... I could roll... Hmm. Let me think. I'm gonna do something a little risky because I like being risky. So let's let's go. Let's move to here with a dex of one, and then for two dex, I'm gonna go after this ranged character. I want to get rid of him. I'm throwing two attack dice at him, and I'm gonna hope that I can get three to take him out in one shot. Hey, look at that, guys. Three damage, it paid off. So one, two, three, he is gone. We can remove him from the game, that's awesome. So I'll just put him over here to the side for now and clean that up later. Uh, that's great news, so one less enemy to hit us, and the cool thing about that is he is uh, typically going ahead of me. So I've just essentially removed a character that's gonna be coming after me before my turn in the future, that's great news. Uh, so my turn is now done. I used a deck, just so you guys understand, a dex to move. Two dice rolled, considered a dex each, is my total of three decks that I'm allowed to use. So I've gone ahead and successfully knocked him off the board. That was awesome. And now he's no longer gonna be stealing any active defense dice, so I can start rolling those and using them to my advantage. Perfect. So Patches is now done. We'll move him to the top and head to Mr. Direwolf Pup, who only hits me with one attack. Please make this a bone. Just one, okay, I can take one hit. I can do that. I like one hits, not two. And then we got this nasty uh, bull, uh, sorry, bog frog in the back here. So the bog frog, he's gonna try his best to get to me. Now I can send him whichever way I want. Uh, I'm gonna send him this way, one, two. He's gonna come around this way. And I can, I can choose because it's equal distance, or sorry, actually, my mistake. So because the rules state that if the, uh, the enemy can't actually get adjacent to me when he's melee, 
he he can't he can't get to me in general. It sounds kind of crazy, but it literally says a baddie will always take the shortest possible route toward a position adjacent to his target. But if no positions are available adjacent to any targets, the baddie will not move. So he's going to stay there, which is good because I'm not drawing his attention. And I'm staying far enough away that he doesn't actually come after me. Um, so that's that's good. That's that's good. So. That's the end, uh, and his poison ability is his melee, so nothing happens because I'm not near him, and he's not, oh, sorry, he's not adjacent to me. So that is done, we are finished the first round. We can tick the first round to two, and we obviously have killed off um, the Goblin Bomber, so he's one less to worry about. So now we only have to worry about this flying creature. So this flying creature, essentially what he'll do is he's gonna move to try to be adjacent to me again. So I'm gonna put him here. And then this flying creature is gonna attack me with his two dice again, which is really nasty. So he's gonna come down out of the sky, try to hit me with two dice, and he got me for two more damage. Holy, so I have one left, not good. So now that's now what's gonna happen though is that both of these effects come off of him after he attacks. So now he's essentially landed and he's right there waiting to die. And it's my turn next, I'm going next, I'm gonna heal uh, my character. The other cool thing is I can now that is no longer uh, the first round I'm gonna use my med kit because why the heck not? I'm also gonna pair that up with two attack dice So I can try to not only heal myself, but kill this annoying bird that keeps flying in and out and causing grief Check it out guys Two heal three damage. It is over that bird has taken a hit that he's not recovering from. So he is gone. We get to knock now both of the dice that were ahead of me on the initiative track are gone. Amazing. And on top of it, I get to heal two instantly. So this med kit automatically bumps me another two. So I'm up to four and I'm right back in the action here. So now what happens with this dice is because it's using it instantly, it is exhausted and it's done for the game unless the game tells me for some strange reason I can get it back, it's gone. Uh, but that's okay. It, it, it did its. It made its purpose, and uh, I'm happy with that. So, what we're gonna do now is we'll just move me myself to the top to denote that I've gone. Now the bull pup, uh, which is right here, uh, or the yeah, the dire wolf uh, pup is beside me. He's obviously going to try to attack me because he doesn't like me. So here we go, and it's a bone. Check that out. So nothing hits now. It goes back to this bog frog, and I just want to be 100% certain. I'm going to take a look here. It's as if there is, um, I just want to, I'm taking a look at the rules really quick just to make sure that I'm not messing up that uh, melee uh, bog frog to make sure he doesn't move. It does say a melee, a, me, a melee baddie will always take the shortest possible route toward uh, a position adjacent to his target if no positions are, uh, if no positions are available Adjacent. Oh, it's if it's no positions are available. Uh, so we would have. Okay, so what would have happened essentially, guys, is he in the last round would have been here. He wouldn't have got to me, but he would have been there. So right now, he would now be beside me. Okay, so there we go. So yeah, I made a mistake. I, I do apologize. Uh, he would come after me. It's just essentially what they're saying is if all the adjacent spots around me have been consumed, there's, there's characters or enemies on them, then he's over here, he will not move. If he has nowhere he can go to get to one. But uh, so essentially it's like if he, if he sees an opportunity to attack me or get in position, he will move. Uh, so I've, I've moved him now. Now last turn he would have made it here. He wouldn't have been anywhere around me to attack me anyway. So that's great news to not have to redo this whole episode again because I'm actually doing okay. But right now he moved here, which means his poison's gonna take effect. That's bad. So what does poison do? It says right here, Poison, set or reset a poison effect die on the target to the number. So the number here says poison two. So we simply go ahead and we grab a poison die. The poison dies look like this and has a counter of two. We're gonna go ahead and put that on myself. So what does that do, you might ask? Well, it says target takes true damage equal to the effect of the dice at the start of their turn after applying damage, reduce the effect die by one. So at the very start of my turn, I'm gonna take poison hits. Now, the very, very interesting question that I have for myself right now is does my one healing from patches happen prior to that? It does say at the start of your turn, heal yourself one HP. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna say 
that that happens before the poison. We might have to check that, but it gets interesting when you have two effects that happen at the start of your turn, which one's happening first, but hopefully we won't run into that situation in this video, but if we do, uh, you know, we'll have to, we'll have to play, it, play it as we go. So we've moved him into position. He poisons me, but he doesn't attack me. He's just annoying. Essentially, he's just gonna continue to, whenever, he, whenever he's beside me and adjacent to me, he's gonna continue to reset this to two every single time, which is gonna continue to hurt me slowly. Uh, so I want to get rid of that. Anyway, so that's essentially him and both of those guys have now gone so we can shuffle them both up the track and then we can reset. So we'll now go to round three, okay? Now the great thing is I get to go right now. So essentially I would heal myself for one. There we go. But this poison marker here denotes at the beginning of my turn I take two poison damage thanks to that really annoying bullfrog. So now I'm down to this. And then I have to tick this counter down to one, saying that like the next time it'll only be one damage. The downside is if he's still alive and he hits me next time, this will just revert right back to two again, which is just painful. Um, so there you go. So that's my turn going. Now I've all I've done is just my starting turn effects. I took my uh, innate recovery, which was plus one, and then I took two away for poison. I set the poison die back one. And now uh, I can go ahead and do my regular turn. Now the only downside is I don't have my med kit, so I can't heal myself quickly. So what I really need to think about doing is not going for the lash. I don't want to go after the direwolf pup right now. That'd be a bad idea. The reason being, he does lashback, which will hit me for one. I don't have the HP to be toying around right now like that. So I need to be going after this bullfrog and hoping, or bog frog, sorry, I keep on bullfrog, in order to kill him. The cool thing is I can roll three attack dice because I boosted my attack dice in the prior video. And hopefully if I get super lucky guys, I can get four damage here and kill him. Hey guys, best day ever, all four. We've taken him off the mat, he is dead. That is awesome. Okay, now I'm getting really excited. Uh, I've actually got a chance to win this. Okay, I, I, honest, I didn't think I was gonna be able to pull killing off four guys, but I'm, I'm doing it. Somehow I'm doing it. So he's gone. Now this poison effect stays on me, right? So, so you guys understand this, this poison effect doesn't just mysteriously disappear. I don't heal myself magically. I will take one damage at the beginning of my next round turn. So in round four, I'll take one damage, but as long as I can keep myself alive, I'm good. And the good thing is I heal myself for one. So that'll just, this dice essentially resets itself to zero and is discarded. But anyway, let's continue with round three. So we just killed off uh, the dire wolf pup, which was yellow. So we're gonna take his die and move it out of the initiative meter. Now we only have one left. Uh, I've already gone with myself here at the very top. So now we're gonna go with the dire wolf pup who's gonna try, oops, who's gonna try to hit me. So the dire wolf pup hits me for one. So let's hope that he rolls a bone because that would be awesome if we could, just one. Okay, so he hit me for one, that's okay. I can sustain that type of a hit. I don't like it, but I can deal with it. Oh, this is stressful. Okay, we're getting down to the wire, guys. Can we do this? Now we're gonna go ahead, we ended it. We roll to round four. Here we go, this is where things get crazy. Uh, I really need to do this now. So it's the beginning of my turn. Now, normally on my turn, I take my innate recovery, which is plus one health, but the poison negates it because it hits me. So the dice is now removed and gone, thanks to the uh, bog frog no longer being in play, but I only have two health. And that's really sketchy. So I'm gonna do three attack dice against this dire wolf pup, and I really need three damage. I need to end it right now. This is this is very important. Oh, talk about serious overkill. Six damage. He is gone. Like blown away. I did not expect to get that kind of roll. I don't know what's going on with this video, like. I need to stop playing Mansions of Madness and Arkham Horror. I need to start playing this game more often because uh, my rolls right now are insane. I, I, I don't know what just happened. I, I, I won. I didn't think I could pull that off. So uh, that's awesome. So all, everyone's gone. That's crazy. So uh, this is really cool. Uh, sorry, I'm just kind of, it's my mind's exploding just with the excitement. Okay, so uh, I've got two... Uh, two health left. I gotta come off the mat just like this. Now normally if I had some stuff in my backup plan, I could sit there and say, well, you know, let's heal myself, whatever. I'm screwed. I have to come off the mat with the two, which means later on when we get down to the uh, recovery phase right here, I'll be opting to likely do an individual option uh, to rest and recover to, re to heal my HP to full. Because at this point, like I'm actually hurting and I, d I do need to focus. Instead of scouting, I really do need to focus in a future video on actually getting myself back up to snuff. But regardless of that situation, guys, we get this, this. We get all this stuff right here. What is this? Well, we get a progress 
point. So hey, let's bump ourselves up. We are now all the way up, one away from Drellin. That's awesome. So we're one away from John. However, we don't have to choose, like, I, I, from what I remember in the rules, you don't have to face him right away if you don't want to. You can continue to do encounters and then pick and choose your time. But remember, the days are what are coming up against you. So I have 10 days to, to get rid of him. Currently I'm on five and very shortly it'll be, or sorry, currently I'm on four and very shortly it'll be five. Uh, so anyway, we've gone ahead and done the progress here. We'll go ahead over here and do our training points. So we are right now kind of in the, I believe what it's called the reward phase where we're doing our progress and our training points, but we get two. So this is really cool. So now we know that it, bumping our attack up to three was amazing. That was a great choice. Uh, what kind of came back to haunt us was not having enough skill dice, right? So maybe having the nutrients dice would be really, really handy. And the reason I think that'd be really cool is if we get that nutrients dice, uh, in future playthroughs, we can do some, it looked like it had a lot of really, really useful, uh, sides to it that could be really cool. So we had something here and again, I'd have to reference my, uh, sheet to be sure that I know what I'm talking about. This one says reroll heal, like reroll your med kit when you fail at a poor roll. That's never bad. And you get a certain number of those. Um, what other things do you get? This one's a chest. So what's that one? This one says immediately draw loot. Like that's super awesome. This one here is, uh, two, is that two bones? Oh, that counts as a two bones. So essentially if you roll this, you actually can put your bone here and it counts as two spaces. That's how you denote that you've got two spaces covered. You just go to the second space. Very cool. Actually, you know what? This is really good. I kind of like this. And then of course you actually have a regular heal three. So this is a really handy dice. I'm unlocking this one. So this is the one I'm choosing uh, to put in there for uh, for patches and of course because we're at the end of the battle now his his med kit comes back from being exhausted so we've got two kind of traits going here now this is really cool so i've only used just one uh, uh training point in order to do that uh you don't have to roll or do anything crazy you gain that skill as soon as you want as long as it has a star symbol uh, then i can gain that and then i have to for this one i have to follow this path uh, for this one these two actually both have stars so i could have picked toxins or nutrients so that's the other thing, what does toxins do? That sounds interesting. So that one's number six, that's this one here. I imagine this one probably would hurt really tough enemies. Let's take a look. Yeah, it says here on the beginner uh, beginner build strat, it says uh, you can take, down there in the skills section, it says, or toxins to help party, help the, I guess it means to help the party do some damage and to get around thick skin. Against hard hitting baddies, your stem line is best though medic skills are safer. Okay, so hard hitting baddies, stem line is better. So the stem kit helps against hard hitting baddies, but this helps us get through thick skin. And I know there's some monsters out there, and we definitely avoided one earlier when we scouted in a previous video, I believe, and put them at the bottom. There are some monsters out there, maybe it wasn't that one, that have thick skin that are super hard to get through. No matter how much attack dice you're chucking at them, they just soak it up. And you need something that can push past it. Maybe this, Maybe instead of going for more dexterity and stuff like that and more attack, I should really be opening up my skills more. So let's go for the toxin dice. I'm gonna, I wanna have the ability to do some really cool stuff. And look, you can get bones on this. So let's go with that. So I'm choosing to go with nutrients and toxins. And we've unlocked two abilities and we also get a loot. And that, now of course, if it had, if that loot symbol there was a purplish shade, then you'd end up getting the trove loot is what they consider uh, the purple shaded kind of color. That is black. So as you can see here, it says each ge uh, gear lock draws one trove loot if it's purple, but we got the each gear lock draws one loot. So that comes from this deck here. It doesn't need to be unlocked, so we just get it right away. That's awesome. What do we get? We got, hey, a treasure trove map. That's pretty cool, single use. Shuffle special encounter the ebonite doorway into your encounter deck if it has not already been completed. Cool. So getting Nugget to talk about anything else today was a lost cause. Very cool. So we, I assume we do this right now. Shuffle special encounter the ebonite. Awesome. So I'm going to pull this encounter out and I'm not going to read it. I'm just going to, outside of the camera, I'm going to find it in my... It's probably a special encounter. I'm gonna put it in here, I'm gonna shuffle it up and I'll, I'll make sure to shuffle that in front of you guys so you, you don't think I'm rigging the deck because I, I, I do play this game legitimately. I do not 
as you can see, like when I play this game straight through, there's no edits, there's no cuts, there's no nothing. I'm playing this live, like I'm essentially playing this live and I'm not, but there's no editing whatsoever. So whatever happens, happens. Um, and so this is a, this was a really cool loot to pull. Um, so yeah, very cool. So I'm gonna add that to my uh, stone hammer here. Now I can have up to four loot total. I think that includes trove loot and loot, but so right now I'm fine. And that essentially covers this. I've, I've now finished this uh, entire card. So this card can now sit with uh, the rest of the ones that I've got now. So I've got five progress points towards Drellin. I only need one more to go after him, although I may or may not want to do that. I might not want to get a little too excited and think and puff. I am kind of uh, thumping my chest a bit thinking that I'm amazing, but maybe it's not a good time to push my luck in and run in. We'll see. Uh, so, what do we do now? We go to uh, lock picking, loot trading, and individual options. So we go to the recovery page. Now this is where we can trade loot, we can do lock picking attempt, or we can do our crazy search for better loot. I still like the stone hammer because one day we're gonna find trove loot or pick it uh, in some encounter, and then I can smash it open or help to smash it open. This I'm gonna resolve right away. So I'm gonna, in between videos, like I said, I'm gonna discard this and put the special encounter in. I don't wanna discard any of this. I like what I'm seeing here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is do what I said I was going to do, and that's rest and recover to full HP. We saw how close we were to dying there when we went into battle last, and we only went in with five, and we were one shy because of how tough the last battle was. Although, in hindsight, that previous battle was a joke compared to what I just got through there. Uh, I just managed to get some really good rolls, guys. I cannot tell you how difficult four enemies on you with all varying abilities is. And some of you know, like I think some of you guys play this game enough to know that playing solo is not nice. It is, it, you do not get a helping hand playing solo, that's for sure. So we get to go all the way up to six. It's the first time the Patches has ever had six health. So he is more than ready for whatever's coming in the future. Now, the other argument I could have made too was I could also sit here and ponder, uh, you know, do I take, I really like the nutrients. But the question would be, do I take the toxins or do I bump my health? So how about this, guys? I haven't given you too much chance to actually chime in on what I do next. This is going to be my chance to give you an opportunity to tell me what to do. I want you to let me know how to use that last training point. I'm choosing to put nutrients in my, in my set. So you can't take that one from me. But this toxins one will help us when we see enemies with thick skin and allows us to poison them. Really useful, very, very useful dice. Depending on which enemies we run to, it's very specific and we can pick and choose when we want to use it. Or maybe you want me to increase one of the stat dice or something like that, or maybe something completely different. If you have a suggestion, I want you to throw it in the comments below and we'll see what people say. If we get enough comments one way or the other, we'll run with it. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this playthrough. Hope this clarifies the game. I hope you guys are just having fun watching me rip through this, but I want to start to involve you guys in some of the decisions as well to make this even more fun and interactive. So until the next episode, guys, thanks for watching and keep on rolling solo. Give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't. I will see you in the next video in the world of Daylor. Keep rolling solo.